Hello, this is Adolf. Welcome to the video lecture series on the course of building construction. In this video, we are going to see a specific building material that is brick. This video contains the in introduction of a brick, then what are the classification of brick, what are the composition of clay bricks, what is the strength of brick, what are the tests done on bricks and some special bricks that is hollow bricks and fly ash bricks. Let's start with the introduction. So bricks are the important building material that is used in every building. For example, if you are building a home, in a home you need to build a wall. Bricks are needed to build a wall. So how the bricks are obtained? The bricks are obtained by molding clay in rectangular blocks of uniform size and then drying and burning these blocks. So what is why bricks are replaced a stone? So bricks are in a uniform size. So they can be properly arranged and it, it is lesser weight than stone. That's why in a building construction, bricks replaced stone as a building materials. There are two types of bricks. One is conventional brick. Another one is standard brick. Let's see conventional brick. These conventional bricks are also called as traditional bricks are those which have not been standardized in size. The dimension of traditional bricks vary from place to place. Mostly the length varies between 20 to 25 centimeter, width varies from 10 to 13 centimeter, thickness varies from 5 to 7.5 centimeter. So according to that, the size is not a standardized one. So for place to place, the sizes will vary between these values. The commonly adopted nominal size of traditional brick is 23 by 11.4 by 7.6 cm or 9 inch by 4 and a half inch by 3 inch approximately. We will use this size as a nominal adopted size of a traditional brick. Next is standard brick. So in conventional or traditional brick, the size of the brick is not determined, it not specified. But in standard brick, the size of the bricks are specified. It was given by the Bureau of Indian Standard Institution, India. So the actual size of brick is 19 by 9 by 9 centimeter. So due to this uniform size, of the brick these bricks are also called as modular bricks so it have some advantages over conventional bricks one is it is economical to manufacture and it requires less area for drying and storing and it requires less brickwork for the same surface area of the wall in comparison to the conventional bricks Composition of clay brick. In clay brick, different constituents are present in a brick to make it better. First one is alumina. It is the chief constituent of every kind of clay. So if you take any type of clay, alumina is the major element present in a clay. So in a good brick, it should be lies between 20 to 30 percentage. So these alumina gives plasticity to the soil so that it can be easily molded to any shape. So if these alumina are present excess more or more than 30 percentage in brick, what will happen during drying and burning your brick may shrink or warp. Next is silica. A good brick contains 50 to 60 percentage of a silica. So silica is the major element or component present in a clay bricks because it has 50 to 60 percentage of percentage of the brick 
So these silica may be exist in clay either as a free element or a combined form. The presence of silica prevents shrinkage and dropping of raw bricks. And it also imparts uniform shape to the bricks. So if a, if a silica presents between 50 to 60 percentage, it prevents shrinking and dropping of raw bricks and it imparts the uniform shape to the bricks. But Durability, it's depend upon the proper proportion of the silica. If you have a proper proportion to the bricks, the bricks durability will be higher. It will be good. Otherwise, the durability will be less. The durability is directly depend upon the proper proportion of silica. If the silica is presented in excess amount, it destroys the cohesion between particles and bricks become brittle. So if, you, if your silica is excess in amount, the cohesion between particle will be destroyed. So particle cannot stick together. Then what happened? Your particle will become brittle. It can be easily broken. Next is line. So line should be presented in the brick earth soil should be 2 to 5 percentage. So these lines prevents the raw brick from shrinkage. If it is present in excess, it causes the brick to melt. So what happened? Due to the melting, it the brick should lose its shape. So in excess, it will brick lose its shape. Next is oxides of iron. So it should be presented in a small quantity of about 5 to 6 percentage in the good air, uh, good brick earth soil. So these oxides of iron gives the red color to the brick. That's why all the bricks are in red color. So if these bricks or uh, these uh, oxides of iron excess than the appropriate limit, it, uh, it makes the brick look like uh, in dark blue or blackish color. Okay. So excess, the bricks will be in dark blue or in blackish color. Next is magnesia. This magnesia present less than 1% in a good brick earth soil. So this magnesia gives the yellow tint. Tint means shade. This yellow tint to bricks and decreases the shrinkage. So if this magnesia present excess than the 1%, it will lead to the decay of bricks. Some other uh, constituents like iron pyrite, alkalis, pebbles, organic matter should not be present in good brick earth soil. Next is strength of brick. So for a common building bricks, the strength of brick should be 35 kg per centimeter square. If it is a second class brick work, your strength of the brick should be 70 kg per centimeter square. If it is a first class bricks, the strength of brick will be 105 kg per centimeter square. If your bricks are made in unburned, that means sun dried bricks, not in clean burnt bricks, that strength should be 15 to 25 kg per centimeter square. The strength of bricks depend upon the following factors. One is the composition of brick earth. So how the soils are composite, composited to the each element like alumina, how many percentages presented or silica, how much is presented, lime, oxides of iron, magnesia or presented any other foreign materials. So these are the composition which determine the strength of the bricks. Next is method of preparing of clay and blending on ingredients. How we are going to prepare the clay and how we are going to add the ingredient one by one. This also gives the uh, imparts the strength of the brick. Next is how we are going to mold the bricks. Whether it is a uh, machine molding or a hand molding. So how we are going to burn it. 
in a clan or we are going to burn or in a sun dried manner so these are the methods of molding how we are going to do it it will directly impact the strength of the bricks next is if you are going to drying the brick how we are going to st stack it stack it means storing the bricks so if uh, we are going to store it in a long ways or in a vertical horizontal ways or in a vertical ways how we are going to store it so these are will be impacted in the strength of the bricks next one is how we are going to load and unloading so due to this loading and unloading the strength uh, bricks will impact uh, to the impacted load so it will affect the strength of the bricks so carefully we have to load and unload the bricks so the how we are going to do the loading and unloading these also impact the strength of the bricks next is the properties of a burnt clay bricks so what are the properties first one it should be table mounted well burnt in clins copper color and free from cracks with sharp and square edges so if a brick it should be table mounted well burnt in clins copper colored free from cracks and with sharp and square edges second it should have a uniform shape and should be of standard size standard size is 19 by 9 by 9 centimeter this is the standard size so it should be in uniform size shape and the standard size and if you struck a brick two brick each other it should give a clear ringing sound next one is when you broke the brick into half, it uh, inside it shows a bright homogeneous and compact structure free from voids. So if it is not a bright homogeneous structure, if you have a uh, uh, the voids are present in the inside the bricks, the strength of the brick will be lesser. It, so it should be free from voids, and it should not absorb water more than twenty percent by its weight for first class and 22 percent for second class brick works so if it is a first class it should not observe water more than 20 percent of its own weight so if it is uh, 100 means 20 percent means 20 so it should not observe water more than 20 if it is observe water more than 20 the brick is not not good quality next if you scratch the brick with your fingernails it should not give any impression on the brick so if give any impression on the brick it is not sufficiently hard so if no impression left on the brick it is a sufficiently hard brick and it should have low thermal conductivity and they should be soundproof so if you drop the brick from one meter height it should not break if it is broken then the brick should be rejected as if you soak the brick in water for 24 hours and then you dried in the shades the a white salt should not be deposited on the layer of the brick if it is deposited then we have to reject the bricks because due to the efflorescence of the bricks next is no brick should have a crushing strength below 55 kg per centimeter square these are the properties of the bricks next is testing of bricks in this testing of bricks the first test is absorption test this test is used to determine the amount of moisture content observed by brick under extreme conditions uh, so we have to take the brick samples from a same stake and we have to weigh the dry weight and um, after the uh, weighing of dry weight we have to immerse the brick in water for 24 hours after 24 hours we have to take out the brick and we have to weigh weigh the bricks so difference between the dry weight and the wet weight will gives the amount of uh, water absorbed by the bricks so for a good quality bricks the amount of water absorption should not exit 20 percentage of weight and if it is a second class brick it is uh, it should not exit about 22.5 percent for a third class brick it should not exit 25 percent of its weight
Determination of Water Absorption of Bricks The water absorption percentage of bricks is calculated with the help of sensitive balance and ventilated oven. The sensitive balance should be capable of weighing within 0.1% of the mass of the specimen. The required sample of bricks is taken from the stack. The specimen is kept in a ventilated oven at a temperature of 105 to 115 degrees Celsius till it attains substantially constant mass. Take the specimen and cool it under the room temperature. Obtain its weight that is M1. Now, immerse the completely dried specimen in the clean water at a temperature of 27 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Remove the specimen and wipe out any trace of moisture. Obtain the weight that is M2 of the specimen after 3 minutes from the removal from water. Then, water absorption percent by mass is calculated by the formula M2 minus M1 divided by M1 into 100. Thus, you have learned how to determine the water absorption of bricks. Next is crushing strength or compressive strength on bricks. So in this, the bricks are placed on a, in the compression testing machine and we have to apply the loads until the brick breaks. So the minimum crushing strength of brick is 3.5 Newton per mm square. If any brick less than 3.5 Newton per mm square, then it is not useful for construction purpose. Determination of Compressive Strength of Bricks The compressive strength of bricks is determined by carrying out the experiment in a laboratory with the help of compression testing machine. At first, the number of specimens is taken from this stack. The specimen should not contain any uneven portion in the bed faces. Then, immerse the specimen in water for 24 hours at room temperature. After 24 hours, remove the specimens and wipe it. Then, fill the frog with the cement mortar of ratio 1 is to 3. These bricks are stored under the damp jute bags for 3 days. After 3 days, take the specimens and wipe off any trace of moisture. Place the specimens with the plywood of 3 mm on both sides in the compression testing machine, with the mortar filled portion facing upwards. Now, apply load actually at a uniform rate of 14 Newton per mm square per minute till failure occurs on bricks. Note the maximum load at which the brick fails. Thus, compression strength in Newton per millimeter square is calculated by dividing maximum load at which brick fails in Newton with average area of the bed faces in millimeters square. This test is repeated for a number of specimen and average of results is taken as compressive strength of bricks for the particular batch of bricks. Next is hardness test on brick. So, a good uh, brick should resist scratches against sharp things uh, like uh, fingernails or, uh, or any sharp tools are used to uh, conduct the test in the field. So, if a uh, good brick should not have scratch impression on the brick, then it is called as a hot brick. If any brick having a scratch impression on the brick, we will call it as a uh, less hot brick, we will reject it for the construction. Hardness test, make a scratch on the brick with your nail. The good quality bricks should not have any impression on the surface. If any marks are left over the surface, these bricks should be rejected. Next is size test on bricks. The shape and size of bricks are very important consideration. So all bricks used for construction should be of same size the sh and it should have a pro purely rectangular in shape with short edges. The standard size consists of 19 centimeter length by 9 centimeter breadth by 9 centimeter height. 
size test, the good quality brick should have rectangular plane surface and uniform in size. This can be checked by measuring the brick in the field. If the size is not uniform, the bricks should be rejected. Let's just color test. A good brick should possess bright and uniform color throughout its body. If the color is not uniform, we can reject the brick from the construction. Color test. A good quality brick should have uniform color throughout. This can be easily identified by observation before purchasing the brick. If there is color variation, the bricks should be rejected. Soundness test of bricks. The sound, soundness test of brick shows the nature of brick against sudden impact. So we have to take two bricks and we have to hit two bricks together and we have to get the clear metallic sound. Then we will call it as a good brick. If it is sound is dull, we will reject the brick for the construction. Sound test. Take two bricks and struck each other. The good quality bricks should produce clear metallic sound. If the sound is dull, the bricks should be rejected. It's just a fluorescence test on bricks. A good quality brick should not contain any soluble salts in it. If I have any soluble salts, then it will cause efflorescence on the brick surface. Uh, efflorescence means a patch of white salt uh, will be present in the top layer of the bricks. Determination of efflorescence potential of bricks. Efflorescence is a crystalline, salty deposit that occurs on the surface of bricks. Knowing the efflorescence potential of bricks will help us to decide the suitability of bricks. To determine the efflorescence of bricks, you need a shallow flat bottom dish containing sufficient distilled water to completely saturate the specimens. The dish should be made of glass, porcelain or glazed stoneware and of size 180 mm into 180 mm into 40 mm depth for square shape and 200 mm diameter into 40 mm depth for cylindrical shape. In the dish, fill water to the depth of 25 mm and place the end of the bricks in the dish. The entire setup is placed in the warm ventilated room. Cover this setup with a suitable glass cylinder, so that excessive evaporation from the dish will not occur. Keep the dish undisturbed, until all the water in the dish is absorbed by the specimens. When all the water has been absorbed and bricks appear to be dry, fill the same quantity of water in the dish. Allow it to evaporate as before. Then, examine the bricks for efflorescence after the second evaporation and the results are reported. Hollow blocks. These are also known as cellular or cavity bricks. So, such bricks have a wall thickness of about 20 to 25 mm. And they are prepared from the mixture of cement, sand, and stone chips. These hollow blocks are light in weight that is about one third the weight of the ordinary bricks of the same size. So the hollow blocks are one third to the weight of one third of the weight of ordinary bricks. This leads to the speedy construction and uh, these hollow blocks reduce the transmission of heat, uh, sound and damp. They are used in the construction of brick partitioning. So this is the hollow block. Fly ash bricks. Fly ash is a fine powder that is a byproduct of burning coal in a thermal power plant. It is a pozzolone material. Pozzolone material means it contains aluminous and siliceous material 
so that it can be easily formed as a paste while mixing it with water. The important composition of fly ash bricks are fly ash up to 60% sand or stone dust 30% remaining 10% we can use ordinary Portland cement or we can add a mixture of lime plus gypsum to it. So these fly ash bricks are divided into two types. One is class C, another one is class F. This class F having low calcium content, uh, calcium content and having a carbon content of about 5 to 10 percentage. Whereas class C will have high calcium content and low carbon content, less than 2 percentage. For any structural construction, we will use class C fly ash bricks. So these are the some of the references you can follow. So in this video, we see the introduction of bricks, uh, types of bricks that is conventional and standard bricks. What are the composition of uh, clay bricks? What is the strength of a brick? And what are the uh, properties of a uh, clay burnt bricks? Next, we saw the what are the tests uh, we are carried out on uh, bricks. Then we saw the special bricks.